so funny. Oh, Anu. Welcome to Dharma Productions 2.0. <laughs> it really is. This is our new outing. Listen, it really is 2.0. I love it. You know, I have to tell you, Karan, the first time I came to a Dharma Productions office, uh, Dharma Productions was a small office underneath the Mahalakshmi right. flyover. Yeah. I came to interview your father. Right. Um, and I was one of his many admirers. And so I almost get emotional seeing how far you brought the company. Yeah, that's why. I mean, uh, you know, it was strange, but uh, it was a big decision about like uh, the photographs that we wanted to put here because I wanted like him to be right at the entrance, rightfully. Mm. Uh, but this was a moment like I just felt it was candid and it was just like, uh, also my father has, uh, if you see very closely, his smile used to reach his eyes. Yeah. Uh, he was a good man and you know, he, he just was. He had he this really visage was. of goodness. Yeah. And I just thought something. Manus, na? Bhala manus, right? Bhala. Bhala. Like good man with good intentions, good heart, open yeah. heart. I feel happy. Proud is not something that I feel. I feel um, grateful, never proud. Uh, but I think from where you were and huh. where was, which is where Kuch Kuch Hota was made out of. The, really? The office under the, yeah, the yeah. Mahalakshmi uh, bridge, the huh. race course office. Um, so it got completely drowned under. Um, oh, in July. To, yeah, that, in July, yeah. that, the bad delusion. All my parents' wedding photographs, Kuch Kuch Hota's entire archive of images. Really? Beta, all gone. Beta, making, all gone. I have no memory. It all went. Oh. So that office has a lot of memories, it but we don't yeah. have any physical memories, unfortunately. We then moved to an office which you've been to, a post yes. in Bandra. Yeah. And but this, Karan, is shock and awe. I mean, yeah. this is massive. Yeah, well, we'll tr we're trying to kind of... Uh, uh, underplayed, but yeah, it's massive. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, to be exact, it's 27,000 square feet. Are you serious? Yeah, with a cabin for everybody that you can think of, which is what I love. Like every director has a home here. But you know what I love in this 27,000 square feet is this wall. Yes. I, I love, I love that you have an entire wall with photographs of the directors who have made films for Dharma. I mean, it's such a generous acknowledgement of their work. Well, it is. I mean, totally. I think they're the reason why we stand tall or stand at all. All of them have made films for us. Uh, some have run, some have not. Some have done well commercially, some may not. But they're right now the pride of, of this company. And I believe that, you know, nurturing this talent has really made us who we are. My dad, I just feel so terrible, never saw any of this. Like, he never saw these kids just spread their love in this office and make the movies they did. I mean, I love it. I feel like a parent. When I see all of them, I feel like this is my, that was Papa and this is like all the, the kids like These are all the kids raised. you had. Yeah, and they behave like really spoiled children at times as well, I have to say. But they still deserve this image on the wall. <laughs> Okay, show me more. You have a you have a dance wall, a music wall. What is that? Okay, the song wall. Shall we take you inside? Entree. Okay, and this is our wall of dance. We normally have a wall of fame in offices. This ah. is our. Uh, shall I say? say shall I be cheesy and say it's our item song wall? You know, Karan, the <laughs> songs from your movies have added so much joy to my life. Uh, these are some of the songs that have actually the reason you remember some of the films. <laughs> Uh, you know, right. And that the first recall is always music, right? I it mean, is. that's the way it is. it is. Which is your favorite song? Right you, now, Chul. Chul. Okay. Right now, uh, you know, but... It, but Somehow I'm, I just don't see you dancing to Chul or hearing <laughs> Chul, Anu. That imagery, I read your tweet and I was like, I'm one. trying to imagine. It's maybe the kids in the, in, in the zone, it's just you. <laughs> it is and me. You. Uh, what do you do? You just, you bob your head to it? <laughs> Yeah, okay. seriously. Literally, like, are you like rapping Bhatshra style? Okay, so before I take you to my cabin, this is Apurvas, who's the CEO of our company. And if you pan on the wall, you have powerful men in powerful positions in big chairs. Uh, so as we rightfully call it, from the wall of dance to the wall of authority. This is where it's this is serious. Where, this is where things get serious. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I feel accountable, uh, like to this room. <laughs> A lot more than, than I do to my own mother at times. Uh, though she won't be happy to hear that. All right, so before that, there's some fun before we go to like work and uh, huh. chat about, is we have a recreation room. Recreation room? Yeah. This is where hardworking people do like in between. We play table tennis. What fun! And they also like some fun stuff. We do like makings off and like photo sessions and, but like this So is that like, all happens here? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That all happens in this room. But table tennis seems to be the new uh, therapeutic form in Dharma, you know, like to kind of like unnerve. Like it's also a game, the only game I can play. Okay, now slowly moving Taylor swiftly uh, towards the cabin. So this is the wall of emotion. Oh, that's This is lovely. mom and dad. 
That's mom and uh, on her 73rd birthday. I surprise visited her in her ladies' lunch time. So this is right outside the door. Enter from the wall of emotion to the to my room. And then I want to show you my favorite part of this room, apart from everything else, the paraphernalia, is my chair. Oh my god! Yeah, you must see my chair. It's the only high camp thing in this entire office, and I think one element was required. So I want you to sit on this chair. I get to sit on that. Her? Yes, you might get a bit lost. It's a big chair, and you're tiny. <laughs> but I still want you to sit on that chair. It's fab. Thank you. Right here, people wonder why the poster of Iron Lady is is up here, but it's autographed to me by the one artist in this world that I absolutely love is Meryl Streep. Oh, fab! And, and it says it was, for Karan Johar yes. with very best in with very best wishes. Wishes, wishes. Okay. So it was my 40th birthday gift that CAA did for me oh. uh, when they because they knew I'm crazy about her. She's the only one person that I'd get weak kneed in front of. Like I don't want to meet anyone else in this world. If I had dinner with Meryl Streep and I repeat dinner, not a handshake, not a hug, dinner, one hour, one on one. Has to be like a full on. That's the only item left on my bucket list. There's nothing else that I need to do. I can die and go to whichever part of the universe after that. I want to have dinner with Meryl Streep. So very proudly plonked there. And I will tell you which is unusual for a director. And if you follow me with your camera, I will show you. This is where hair and makeup happens. For the director? Yes. I love it. Why should only the actors look pretty? Absolutely. So this is hair and makeup. This is where it all happens. I get ready, wardrobe, hair and makeup. Fab. Yeah. Fab. So this is where I get ready when I have to go to various events and, and uh, interviews <laughs> such as these. All right, so this is us. That's you in my big chair, and I me getting it. completely comfortable and happy to be in my environment. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Dharma 2.0 oh, all over again, Anu. I'm feeling really royal in this. Are you? Yeah. In I'm my chair like... with feathers. <laughs> okay, tell me about this picture. So that's Shahrukh and Gauri. How can I not have them? And I wanted a good-looking one of them. Uh, so this is the campaign they shot for, and I was like, I need this image in my room. Like you know, for mom and me, it's like Adi and Yashankar. And there was Shahrukh Gauri and the kids. These are like, like, like family to me, you know. Like it's what it is. Like I don't have any other kind of relatives that I want to put up on walls. I have my directors, I have my parents, and I have these guys. Tell me, when you see a script, how do you know that this should be done by some other director, or do those directors bring their own scripts to you? Yeah, that's what they do. When I green light a script, it's always a director who has kind of uh, brought a narrative or a screenplay or a thought or a synopsis to me, and then. Things just fall into place. It's your instinct, you know. That's all I have. I have my instinct. I have nothing else. Let's say there's just a script with no director attached. You know there are things that you can't do. Actually, that's very rarely happened. On it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen as yet. And I want it to happen. I very rarely get a screenplay which I then source a director for. That I haven't done. It's always a director attached to the material. But I've recently like started like you know reading scripts that we've outsourced. We have a project development team in the, which is in the next wing of our office. Three guys who kind of read and source scripts and then, you know, we find and attach directors. But right now, all the content we made has been built organically by the filmmaker himself or herself. You described yourself as, uh, you said, I'm a mid-level guy who's trying for genius. Yeah. Uh, so, are you acutely aware of your own shortcomings as a director, the yeah. things you can't do? Yeah, yeah, totally. I've always been aware of that. There's so much I can't do and there's so much that what I do, no one else does. It's like, I'm very clear about like the kind of stories that I would want to tell. Like human dramas mainly, I, I think, and the, the complexities of relationships within the, of the people I understand, not of people of different demographics that perhaps I don't. And I saw Piku, for instance, um, like I knew that that story I connected to because my father also had stomach issues, you know, so I related to it emotionally. But the syntax that Sujit and Juhi got in terms of writing and directing that film, I perhaps don't have it. Or the magnum opus action film, like a Doom series. I don't know, I, I'm maybe not cut out for action and, and car chases and like that kind of stuff. Maybe I'm just not good for that. But there are films, like when I saw Dhoni that day, I was like, how interesting would it be to tell a biopic? Like, that's what I want to do. But then I see other movies and I'm like, I can't do that. Like, I can't do what Raju Hirani does. When I see Sanjay Bansari's aesthetic, it is, it always leaves me amazed. Baffled at times, amazed, jaw-droppingly amazing. Like, I know that we all do what we do, you know. We'll be different from each other in different ways. But there will be a certain chap that you have as a filmmaker that is very you. And no matter what you do, you leave it behind. Okay, Karan, I'm going to take you over some of the tropes in your films yeah. that you keep revisiting. So right. I, I want you to tell me why you love these things so much and what they mean to you. The benches. Ah, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Really? This obsession for benches. 
I mean, I'm trying. You know, it's very strange. A couple of years ago, when I was in therapy, uh, and uh, it, when you go back to your childhood, um, and uh, it came up in my conversation with the, with the therapist is about my obsession about sitting on my own. As a child, I used to do that a lot. Like when kids were uh, like playing, I would like not want to play with them because I was an only child, and for some reason, I got used to being on my own and liked it. And I was also had full of complexes because of my weight and other stuff. So I would sit like alone and like that. So there was always in school, there was a playground uh, and there was this bench that, you know, I remember very clearly, it was like a red bench and I used to sit on it. The reason that I used to like to sit on my own and that bench is a part of my, now I'm analyzing it over too much, but it's, she explained. And then I told her, I said, do you know, I have a bench as a uh, motive in almost every film of mine. And she says, you like benches. It equals isolation for you and you used to enjoy that as a child or that was your comfort place, is to sit away. And see, I'm over analyzing it and trying to be cerebral about it. Maybe I just like benches. I don't know. Maybe it just frame well with good looking locations. But I've tried to give Not you to some reason. pretty people. But the reason I said this to you is because it came up. In, yeah. my, in, in my discussion of therapy, which is why uh, I'm saying that, who knows? So the next one is bridges. They're just good looking locations. I don't know. I don't know. Now that you bring it up, I'm like, yeah, perhaps my eye gets drawn to these things. I think scale. It's what gives you scale. But it's not conscious. No, I don't think so. It's not like, remember there used to be that one tree in Uti where everybody would dance? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. I just think bridges are just like beautiful and large and they frame really well on camera. If it's not in Edil though, there's no bench in Edil either. Edil has no bench and it has and no bridge. Has no bridge. Oh, you gotta update yourself. Yeah, I mean, I can't be plonking them. And and there's a reason why he sings those songs. He's a singer, <laughs> you know. So I'm there's just no. Singing. He's just not singing. He's a singer. He's, he's a bakaida. He's a singer. There's a reason. So this time there's logic. Guess what? <laughs> Can you imagine? Get all that beauty and a little bit of brain. Listen. Doesn't hurt, no? No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. Next is the clothes. Yeah. Okay, I remember, I remember meeting Yashji around the time of K3G and he was, he was just shaking his head and saying, Usko to jamewar shawls bhi really chahiye. <laughs> I can't help it. It's my so mood. you just love clothes? Love it. Love it. All the things I couldn't wear as a kid, all the things I lived vicariously through, I love good looking clothes. Clothes are my thing, yeah. I'm a big online shopper even now. You know, I buy things I just don't fit into and I buy things I don't need. I buy the same thing again and again sometimes. Um, I'm crazy. That's my big indulgence. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke and drink. I just shop. I can't help it. It's a vice. Okay, and last one is sports. <laughs> <laughs> Who would imagine? Who would imagine? imagine? Yeah. Why are all the people in your films so, so sporty? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm not. See, I don't. I, I don't have the frame to wear those good-looking clothes. I don't have the body to run. You dress to be well famous. covered. Yeah, but like I cover it all up. These are all childhood like like aspirations. I so want to have that amazing body and play football, like and and completely be messy and sweaty and score that goal and like you know give that whole fist bump to a a, a um, you know a teammate. It ain't happening, <laughs> but you can live it, right? In Student of the Year, it was my full badass came out. There was a triathlon for crying out loud. They were cycling, they were swimming, and they were running. I mean, like, like it was testosterone on another level. Like, you have to kind of live vicariously through your cinema. Be it the clothes that your characters wear or the sporty activities they indulge in. All the things you don't do, they do. Karan, tell me, I read that Yajji left you a letter. In which he said that these are the finances, these are the people you should trust, these are the people you shouldn't trust. Uh, what was the most important piece of advice in that letter? Actually, it was technical. The letter was very. It was technical. no advice. There was no. It was not an emotional. But didn't it end with saying saying to you that I love you more than you yes, know? Yes, that he said. That was the end. He said, "You, I love you, and I, I know that you will take it forward, and I love you more than you've ever known." That was the only emotional line in the end. The rest of it was academic and book, and information, details, people you can trust, people you can't trust. These are people you should let go of. And you know, these are people you should keep. These are people you should continue with. These are the details, accounts. People owe me this, don't ask for it till they come to you. And there were people who came back and said, your dad had lent this to me, but he was, they, their names were not on that list. So I said, no, he gave it to you in, in other kinds of faith and I can't take it back. So that letter was uh, my mandate. I mean, for the first two or three years of, uh, of our existence at Dharma Productions without him and I was really on slippery surfaces most of the time. Like I didn't know where I was going. There were feelings that I would like merge Dharma with somebody else, collaborate, just not be able to do it on my own. I was going through a gamut of those thoughts and emotions and 
in the middle of that, like when this letter came, uh, I was like, okay, I have to follow this and I have to do it. And the one thing the letter did for me is make my mind up about definitely taking the company forward without any compromise, without uh, selling out. It was amazingly clear. He's taken time to write that letter. And there were five letters uh, that were signed, just signed by four or five empty pages with a signature on it for anything that we needed. And it was all part of one docket given to me. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, Karan, what intrigues me is, is that largely you make very sort of uncontroversial films about love and longing. And, and somehow they end up in these raging controversies. You've been through it with Wake Up Sid, with My Name is Khan, now with Edil Mushkin. How do these experiences shape you as, as a director and as a person? What does it do? As per my father's legacy, and that's what he always said to me. He said, when you're in the right, nothing can stop you. You know, then no force can like, you know, really come in your way. So that's what I believe. I believe being strong, rising above a situation is, and being strong for you and your company is very important. Yeah. I believe that very strongly. Well, I know it's, it, it is a time, but pre-release anyway is always a time of high pressure. So, yes, to sort of... Yes, air film hai mushkil. Yes, film hai mushkil. So, we'll bring Christmas in a little early with a oh. gift. Oh, thank you. I get a gift. You it's get a gift. It's my hamper without a rapid fire. Indeed. Oh, you didn't even have to you. answer any difficult questions. I know. This was easy. This <laughs> was fun. What is this? It's a laptop. It's a Surface Pro. Oh, fantastic. I love getting presents. It's a Surface Pro. I love it. And this looks really sleek. Thank you, Anu. I'm happy. Thank you. So, Karan, Shakespeare in Love is one of my favorite films. Yes. And, and I have to, uh, and I've got a little cue card to read out this, these dialogues. So, there's a conversation between Philip Henslow, who owns the theater, yes. and Fanny Mann, who's actually the financier. Yeah. Uh, so Henslow says to him, Mr. Fennyman, allow me to explain about the theatre business. The natural condition is one of insurmountable obstacles on the road to imminent disaster. Yeah. So Fennyman says, so what do we do? Huh. And Henslow says, nothing. Strangely enough, it all turns out oh, well. Man. And Fennyman says, how? And he says, I don't know. It's a mystery. <laughs> it's true. It is, is true. Do you believe that? It is true. It's exactly that. I think this kind of sums up our existence in the movies because it's true. I always say, where else can you sing, dance, laugh and cry and still be at work? Only here. And all that you're doing, Karan, makes a lot of us really happy. So keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> I so will. much. I will and thank you. <laughs> thank you for making my new office famous. <laughs> thank you. Hi, subscribe to Film Companion. Hit that button below and get your film fixed.